Hey folks, Randy Newberg here with another bonus episode of Leopold's Hunt Talk Radio. Uh, you've heard us going through all these state-by-state -state reminders. I want to make sure that you do what we're trying to promote, and that is hunt elk every year. And in order to do that, you need a tag. So we've already done uh, Arizona and Wyoming. Um, trying to remember, I think we've done, let's, what other states have we done? I'm, I'm trying to sort out what states we haven't and haven't done yet here. Uh, today I'm getting ready to do Montana. And the reason that I'm doing Montana is the deadline is coming up pretty soon. So if you happen to miss that deadline, you, there are, let me restate this. I, I try to put the fear in everybody that if you miss a deadline, you're not going to be able to do it. But there are some leftover options we'll get into in Montana. But so far we've done Utah, we've done Arizona, we've done Wyoming. And in this one, we're going to do Montana. Because there's, well, there's a lot of reasons why you want to hunt Montana when it comes to elk. Uh, one, it's got great draw odds. Uh, for the general tag and uh, the general tag I think we've got <clears throat> if you add them all up Montana is way more complex than it needs to be as far as the regulations and the uh, unit by unit uh, rules but I think we've got 165 hunting districts in Montana something like that a little over 160 and I think with your general elk tag you can hunt 130 something of those so the majority of the state is available and then you get super super long seasons we're talking six weeks of archery followed by five weeks of rifle in all of these general units so that's why i want to one give you a few reminders give you a bit of overview about this and know that you can go and really get all the details on this out at go hunt they are who is asking us to do these reminders, these bonus episodes. So they're brought to you by GoHunt.com. Uh, their insider service is what we use. I'm sitting here right now with it up in front of me. And <laughs> I can't imagine how many hours I've spent on their GoHunt system in the last short while, probably the last two months. And everything's right here at my fingertips. Everything I need. So... Go to GoHunt.com and sign up for the Insider. Use promo code Randy, R-A-N-D-Y, and you're going to get $50 of mad money, free credit, in their gear shop. This is also brought to you by Leupold Optics. Go to LeupoldOptics.com. Look at all the new great products coming out 2019. Uh, I'm one of the lucky guys. I get to use a lot of them as prototypes, and I can assure you that you'll be, you'll be impressed if you use them. Then we have Onyx Maps. <laughs> Where to even start with Onyx Maps? My goodness. I, last night I was doing my scouting for uh, <laughs> my Wyoming deer and elk app, or deer and antelope applications using Onyx. Uh, go to onyxmaps.com, use promo code Randy, save 20% on all their app products. They're just, uh, that's one of those, I don't know how I hunted without it sort of events. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Eric, for coming up with Onyx. Uh, and lastly, but certainly not least, is Orion Coolers. Go to orioncoolers.com. Check out the best coolers I know of. Use promo code Randy when you check out and get 20% off. And uh, we're working on a, a few other uh, promo code things with some of our partners. And even if they're not, partners in this podcast we might pass them along to you so you can save more money but before we do that uh, I want to dig into Montana uh, we're going to talk about Montana for the next 20 to 30 minutes and hopefully when we're all done you understand why it is that Montana is such a great elk destination uh, I said that we have long seasons you get with your general tag you get six weeks of archery hunting this year it starts September 7th if I remember right, and it goes until mm, October 20th, something like that. Uh, and then we follow, we, we give the elk a week off, and then rifle season starts the next weekend. Uh, trying to remember when rifle season starts. I think it's like October 
26th, if I remember right, this year. I think that's the start of it. And it goes for five weeks. Uh, always closes the Sunday after Thanksgiving. So that's really a long season for one tag. For I mean, if you draw this, this general elk tag, that's how much hunting you can do if you can fit it in your calendar to get here. The other thing I would say is the amount of public land. If you start in eastern Montana, it's mostly private. And as you move yourself west, it'll be more public. We have 30 million acres of public land in Montana. And then in our, we have a program called the Block Management Program. It's where private landowners are compensated for the impacts of allowing public hunting on their land. Um, a lot of those are not necessarily elk properties, uh, especially the ones in eastern Montana, but we have 7 million acres, a little more than that, I think, uh, enrolled in the block management program. So you add all that together, there's a lot of places to go and hunt in Montana. The other part that uh, I think a lot of people overlook is in Montana, we usually have har our harvest of six pointer better bulls usually run somewhere between the low 40 percent to the mid 45 like around 45 so 42 to 45 percent of our bulls are six points or better which is very good i mean a bull usually he's three and a half at a minimum usually four and a half before he becomes a six point so You've, uh, you, you've got some nice bulls here, and if you're really into trophies, uh, trophy scoring or scores, I'm not, but uh, go to the Boone and Crockett Club and sign up for their trophy search database, and when you do that, put in Montana. It, you'll probably be very, very surprised when you see how Montana comes up in the record book search, and the reason I... <laughs> I say that is just for every one animal that you might hear about in the record book, there are a lot of animals that don't ever make it in the record book. So for every one, there's dozens more that are close or just the hunter just don't doesn't enter it. So since 2015, Montana is the number one state with Boone and Crockett bull elk. Yeah, <laughs> I know some of you are like, what? Yeah, since 2015, Montana has 23 typicals. Arizona, 16. Utah, 16. Wyoming, 16. Nevada, 12. So that's, uh, that's, <laughs> that's surprising to a lot of people. I know that. Um, but, and if you look at it by county, uh, the county's down in Region 3, the southwest part of the state happen to have the majority of the bull elk harvest. So obviously you're going to have a really, really good representation in the record book from those counties. So again, not that I'm into that record book stuff, but a lot of people use that as an indicator to see what, where is a good age class. And across Montana, you will find a pretty good age class. One of the things you'll see is Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks puts out uh, their elk objective status map, they call it. Uh, you can see it out here at, on Go Hunt on their insider. I'm, I'm going through some of the points in the strategy article. The strategy article on the insider is put together by uh, Brady and Trail. Uh, it's pages and pages and pages. Um, I'm just picking the highlights here. One of the things you'll see in this elk objective map that everything in red is over objective and so everything eastern montana central montana southeast montana is over objective part of that is because when the elk management plan was put together i believe in 2004 those elk objectives for those units were very very low so it doesn't take a lot of elk to be over objective um, some people would say that's the whole case in Montana for every district that our objectives are set lower than they should be. Um, they're certainly set far lower than what the carrying capacity of the habitat is. But uh, you get to the southwest part of the state, even there some of the units are considered above objective. Um, most of them are considered at objective. And then if you get over in the northwest part of Montana, and I'm not trying to discourage anybody from northwest Montana, but I think you will be discouraged when you hear from hear what I say or if you look at the maps, is region one up there is really struggling with 
our elk numbers. That's a combination of a lot of things. Um, it's habitat quality. Those forests up there have just, they're getting older and older. And as forests get older, they get less productive. So with fire suppression, with less logging, less thinning, you end up with an older forest that has less productivity for elk. And then you add in the fact that there are plenty of wolves and grizzly bears, other predators up there that has an effect. And if you read the science, you know that uh, healthy habitat uh, prey species are not as affected by uh, the entire push or, or, or pressure from predators. The lower the quality of habitat, the greater the amplified effect of predators. So Northwest Montana is a tough spot. If you're going to draw a Montana elk tag, um, that's probably not the place you're going to go. Uh, so all that deadline, don't miss the March 15th deadline. That's when you have to have your application in this year. They're still taking paper applications, but next year Montana is going to complete online applications in 2020. So you may as well just go set up your account this year. If you're someone who's been doing it on, uh, as a paper application, go set it up this year and you'll be set ready to go. The good part about Montana is you usually find out your results sometime between April 15th and April 20th. So you'll be able to apply. Let's see after that, you'll still have Nevada and Idaho available to you. So you 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 get a, a pretty quick turnaround in Montana. Um, the crazy part is, and I I'm not sure what our I'm, <laughs> when I say crazy part, I was about ready to jump into how the limited entry tags work compared to the the general tags. That's a crazy discussion, and I may as well get into it right now. Um, so if you're a non-resident, and let's say you wanna limited entry tag in central Montana, say around the Missouri River breaks, right? Everybody knows the Missouri River breaks are known for good elk hunting, but it's all limited entry hunting, even for residents. So archery and rifle are both limited entry, whether you're a resident or a non-resident. But most of us who are residents, we just go buy our tag over the counter, our general tag, and then we can apply for the limited entry draw for one of those example tags I'm talking about. Now, we as residents have to apply by March 15th, just like non-residents. But here's kind of the hiccup for non-residents. You can't go down to the sporting goods store or the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks office and just buy your own tag. So you have to apply first. You, you got to clear two hurdles to get a limited entry tag. First, you have to draw a general tag. And you do that with the March 15th deadline. If you're successful in drawing your general tag, you can check the box on the application that says, in the event I draw my general tag, please put me in for unit, whatever number it is, as a limited entry hunt. So you've drawn your general tag, you check the box, you apply for one of the limited entry hunts. Maybe you don't draw that limited entry hunt. So you still have your general tag. And then a lot of people, a lot of non-residents say, well, if I don't draw my limited entry hunt, I want to get my money back or part of it. So Montana has some really weird refund rules about how you can get your money back. And uh, I think the date that they go by is August 1st. Yeah. If, if you say you draw a general tag, but you don't draw your limited entry tag, you can ask for a refund before August 1st and you'll get 80% of your money back. If you wait until after August 1st, you'll only get 50% of your money back. So uh, that's, <laughs> it's just the way Montana does it. I, I apologize that we have probably the most complicated system out there. I, I wish I could tell you why it's this way. Um, I, there's not a good excuse why it's this complicated, but anyhow, just remember, you got to clear the first hurdle of acquiring your general tag. 
And uh, if you are lucky in that draw, and I think the draw odds are between 80 and 85% each year for that elk or elk deer tag. So there, I just brought up another piece, right? You can apply for the elk only tag or the deer elk tag. And then you'll see it says elk combination, deer elk combination, deer combination. And people say, what's the combination part of that? Well, they combine a fishing license and an upland bird license with any of those three that I just mentioned. So that's why they call it a combo tag. So really, when you apply, you check the box, I want to do elk only, or I want to do elk and deer, or I only want to do deer. Um, for the purpose of this discussion, since it's all about hunting elk every year, the elk deer combination license as a non-resident is going to set you back $1,041. If you want the elk only portion, you can knock about $160 off that, I think it is. You'll still pay $885. So, and if we didn't make it complicated enough, when you non-residents are applying for your general Montana non-resident elk tag, that is done on a preference point system. In other words, he or she with the most points gets the tag. And then over here on our bonus point or on our limited entry tags, that's done on a bonus point system where it's like a raffle system. If you buy five raffle tickets and I only buy one, you have a five time higher likelihood of drawing the limited entry tag than I do. So, <laughs> oh gosh. Anyhow, that's uh, the, that's how we do it here. So one other thing, a lot of people think that, well, I got my general tag and I'm going to apply for a limited entry tag because that'll give me a second elk tag. No. What it does is when you apply in the limited entry draw, it says you still have your general elk tag, but now your general elk tag is also good if you want to go hunt this limited entry unit. So you only get to take one elk and you can take it in any of the general units or in the limited entry unit that you were successful in drawing for. If you don't draw in the limited entry draw, then your general elk tag is just good for that 130 some units that are the, the general areas. So if you're not confused yet, you should be. Um, <laughs> this, all of this stuff I'm talking about here is laid out very well in these the strategy articles that uh, Go Hunt puts together. Um, I'm just looking at uh, last year, the big game tag, if you had zero preference points and we're talking about preference points for the general tag here was 51 percent if you had one preference point or above it was 100 percent so everyone with one or more preference point drew the deer elk combo tag if you had zero preference points uh 51 percent of you drew the combo tag then if you go to the elk only tag everyone with more one or more preference points drew and if you had zero uh preference points 50 almost 54 percent drew the elk only tag so uh it's <laughs> crazy um so point of that is uh people will ask should i buy a preference point well it costs you 50 dollars I believe, per year for that preference point towards your Montana general tag. Um, is it worth $50 to know that next year you have pretty much 100% draw odds? I leave that up to you. So one other thing, at the beginning of the podcast, I said you have to draw a tag before the March 15th deadline in order to come hunting here. Well, there's a slight variation to that in the how I told you there were refunds that you could get if you didn't draw your limited entry tag. So what happens is a lot of these people who draw the general tag will ask for their 80% refund by August 1st. And then these returned or surplus licenses go on sale usually the first later part of the first week of August. So I think this year, if I... I, you check this out for sure, but I think they're going to go on sale August 7th this year. 
and it's on a first come first serve basis so if you did not say you're one of the unlucky 45 percent who didn't draw the general tag because you had zero points don't give up all hope in montana you still might be able to get one of those returned or surplus licenses i think is what they call them uh, in august and those are licenses that have been returned by people who they drew the general tag but didn't draw the limited entry tag so they asked for their money back so all's not lost if you don't draw on the first go around but the the other part is you're only going to get a general tag if you don't draw on that first go around those refunded surplus tags those are just general tags uh, other part in the limited entry draw, Montana limits non-residents to up to 10%. Doesn't mean non-residents are guaranteed 10% of the limited entry tags. It means they can get up to 10% of the limited entry tags. Um, probably two other things that I get asked a lot living in Montana is, well, have the wolves eaten all the elk? No, the wolves haven't eaten all the elk. Uh, they certainly have an impact. Um, anyone who would deny that uh, is crazy. Um, I always tell people what you should do is go buy a wolf tag to have in your pocket while you're out there because our wolf season, it's over the counter. Even as non-residents, you can go buy up to five wolf tags. Not that I think you're going to see five wolves, but, but you can uh, buy five wolf tags. And I can't remember what the tag cost is for non-residents. Um, they're, they're quite inexpensive. And so I tell people have one in your pocket. Um, I'd say the place where the wolves have had the greatest impact are the areas right around Yellowstone park and Northwest Montana. Uh, they've had impact to some degree everywhere, but they've, uh, you, you hear a lot of arguments, debates, um, uh, believe of it what you want. I tell people, go do your own research, read the science, uh, and see what, what that tells you. But, uh, I would, I, I wouldn't change my hunting plans based on the presence of wolves or, or not having wolves. The reason I say that is if you were going to go hunt someplace and say, oh, dang it, I found out there are wolves there. I changed my mind. Well, you're not going to have many places to go and hunt then. <laughs> Just how it is. Because we got them spread throughout Montana. Uh, less less of them in the central, northeast, or southeast part of the state. But they get an occasional one that comes through there. So wolves are one issue. The other is probably grizzly bears. Um, we have a lot of grizzly bears in Montana. If you, the, when people email or ask me, Hey, where would you go? Where'd you suggest I go hunting in Montana? Um, I, my first question usually is what's your comfort level with grizzly bears? And there's nothing wrong with saying, you know, I'd rather not deal with them. I don't come from an area where there are any, I'm, I just, I, I don't know enough about it. And because I don't know much about it, I'm a little uncomfortable. Just say so. And then go hunt places with no grizzly bears are a very low likelihood of grizzly bears. And those would be the areas in central Montana, uh, areas in the far, far west, uh, the, the Bitterroot country, uh, those, uh, supposedly there's no grizzly bears there, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on that anymore. So if it's an issue, just accept it and, and know that a lot of the places in Montana if there are grizzly bears, there's plenty of places that have very low, low densities where your likelihood is very, very slim. If you say, hey, I'm willing to hunt where there are grizzly bears, well, good. Then you can hunt south of I-90, which is the core of the elk range, and that's where you're going to find the best elk hunting. You're also going to find grizzly bears, so it's just... <laughs> I don't know how to tell people. It's it's just a reality of if you want to hunt the best general units in Montana, odds are you're probably going to have to be a little comfortable with grizzly bears. So one last thing, getting back to points. Say that you didn't buy a point with your application um, between July 1st and September 30th. Now we've made it in Montana, so you can go buy a point for any of this, uh, the species. Um, you can buy uh, a bonus point for the limited entry species, and you can buy a preference point for the general uh, tag. 
you, you haven't lost out uh, completely if you decide not to buy a point with your application. In fact, I tell people I wouldn't buy a point until I knew that I didn't draw. And if I didn't draw, then maybe I'd think about going and buying a point. So trying to think what else. Oh, uh, the thing that I really like about Montana is how we have such long archery seasons and the, the way the topography and land ownership in Montana lays out. The archery season in Montana is one of the best general archery season tags in the West. And for a couple of reasons. One, we, we have a very long season right through the peak of the rut. This year it starts September 7th. It usually, I think September 7th is the latest it ever starts. It always starts between September 1st and 7th. And it runs for six weeks. So you have the whole month of September, which is just right in the middle of the rut. You can time your calendar really good. You can time it with the moon phase. There, there's a lot of flexibility available to you. The other part is, if you think about, if you've ever driven through Montana, much like the rest of the, the western states, and at least in the Rocky Mountain area, the high country... Are, uh, is where most of the elk are in September. The beauty of that is most out of high country is public land. Later in the season, when weather and hunting pressure start moving the elk lower, those lower valleys often are private land with difficult or sometimes no access. So if you want to have access to those big bulls that you see in November down on the private, they're usually up on the public in archery season. And that is why I am such a huge fan of Montana's archery season. In fact, if you look at our calendar this year for me and our production crew, me, Michael, Marcus, Dan, uh, the guest hunters we have this year, I've told them all, you know what, just come to Montana for archery season. Don't let's let's not travel in the past years. We've went to New Mexico for archery season or we've went to Utah for archery season, whatever it might be. No. Montana's got such good archery hunting. We're <laughs> we're not traveling. We're we're not leaving quality elk hunting to find other elk hunting. Uh and, and I would suggest any of you who draw this general tag, uh I I hope that you you are into archery because you're really going to have a good hunt a fun hunt if you come here in the archery season the weather's better uh that like i said the elk are going to be more accessible to you if you're hunting public land like we do and the majority of the state the really good parts of the general units are going to be wide open to you with that tag so i'm sure i've missed a few pieces <laughs> don't know what they are uh, we're having a brutal winter here in Montana. I, uh, it's, we had a, a Eastern and, and pretty much a band from, I'd say, Great Falls, Montana, down to the southeast corner of Montana. They had a brutal winter last year where we lost a significant number of our deer and antelope again. And that happens every eight to ten years. Well... Right now, we're going back to back. We're, and this really, really bad winter this year is hitting all of Montana. The what, Last year, the western part of the state was spared by that really hard winter that hit central and eastern Montana. This year, we are getting creamed. Uh, it's early March right now. I have no idea if it'll moderate, but we have so much snow. And this morning, the temperature in my home of Bozeman, was almost 30 below zero. Yeah, really, really cold. We're dealing with wind chills up in the Lewistown Haver area of 50 below today. So you take that, you stack, I don't know how much snow, but unbelievable amounts of snow, and it's not good for deer and antelope. And uh, I'm not predicting that it'll wipe out the elk, but it certainly... Some of these elk, especially the ones that came into the, the winter in tough shape, they're going to have a tough go of it. So there's not much you can do about that. Uh, elk will always fare better than deer during these tough winters, but it still could have some effect on those older age classes that uh, think about 
how rutted up some of these bulls get. They're seven, eight years old, and they're just withered to nothing after the rut, and they got to try, try make a living. Hmm. Really tough when the weather's like this. So, but what I've given you here is just the overview. If you want the the real details, the gory stuff, the <laughs> the stuff that gets way down in the weeds, I would suggest you go out to go hunt. Check out the application strategy articles to start with, and then go into the state by state by state specifics. Um, you, you'll have the draw odds. You'll have what they call filtering 2.0, where it's this really cool system. You say what state, whether you're a resident or non-resident, the map comes up of that state, and you say, "Here's how many points I have. I want draw. I'm looking for units that have draw odds of some percentage, some percentage of public land, some percent harvest success, and you start putting all of that sorting and filtering criteria in there, and it starts eliminating units off your map. And by the time you're all done, there's a small handful of units that meet your criteria, and you know that's a good place to start your research. So. Anyhow, go to GoHunt.com, sign up for the Insider, use promo code RANDY, and get $50 of free credit in their gear shop. That's what you need to do. $50. Mad money. Cash. And their gear shop is really, really good. So, don't forget the deadline, March 15th. Uh, this podcast is going to be up here about 10 days before that deadline. And uh, if you do miss it, you're not going to get a limited entry tag for sure. You might be able to pick up one of the leftover tags come August, but you'll you'll be standing on the outside looking in. And if you're going to hunt elk every year, we don't want that. Uh, Montana is one of your your better options if hunting elk every year is part of your plan. So I'd I'd really look hard at Montana, especially if you are an archer. So with that. I've kept you long enough. I'm trying to keep these bonus episodes uh, less than a half hour. I think I'm slightly over that, but hopefully it's worth your time to listen. And the next one that we're going to do is New Mexico. Thanks a lot, folks. Good luck in the draw. Appreciate you following along.